today's uh, today's date is August the 13th, 2018. The time is uh, 5:38, and I call this uh, public hearing uh, to order. Not being, uh, do we we do not require a uh, a quorum? Is that correct, Evan? So we will not be taking the roll. So we'll, we'll go ahead, uh, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, uh, this public hearing is on the optional flexible school day program. Uh, Mrs. Peterson, Sue Peterson, our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education and Leadership, will be uh, presenting. I uh, also like to thank Ms. Norma Brewer and, Ms. and Dr. Raul Cantu for helping to prepare this. No quorum. Okay, before we go move forward, um, we have an item that is establishment of a quorum. However, uh, our council has instructed us that we are not required to have one because it's only a public hearing. It is a public hearing. Uh, so, but since it is on the agenda, we will proceed with a, uh, to establish a quorum that being all members present with the exception of uh, Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, go ahead. Good evening, Dr. Canales and members of the board. We're presenting today on the optional flexible school day program. This has been in place for in Westlaco for the past eight years and it's a leave or recovery option for us. So it was authorized by House Bill 1 back in 2006 and we were authorized to begin in 2009. However, Westco ISD did not start this program until the 2010-2011 school year. And again, it's for a leave or recovery. So, TEA offers us the opportunity to offer a program that offers flexible hours for students. So the students that we're targeting for this are students that have already dropped out of school, are at risk of dropping out, or will be denied credit for one or more classes in which they've been enrolled as a result of attendance requirements. And our goals are simple. We'd like to improve our graduation rate and reduce our dropout rate. So what happens on an optional flexible day is students have the opportunity to attend a flexible schedule. And instead of being penalized for their absences, the district only receives credit when they're present for at least 45 minutes. So it's an alternate method of attendance accounting. It does require record keeping and additional work for our PEAMS persons, but again, it's an option for our students. They must take STAR, so any student that's not test complete must still take STAR if they're enrolled. They may participate in UIL, but the students in this program rarely participate in anything extracurricular. They're mostly overage students who are just trying to graduate. So we must submit an annual application to the Texas Education Agency and request approval for participation. We must have a public hearing, which is what we're doing this evening. And then it is on the board agenda. Um, and if approved, then we will apply and submit the application to TEA. This past year, we had the following students you can see on the table participate at Wasco High School, 28 participated at East, 9, and at South Palm Garden, 7. We're not requesting any slots for our Kate Early College High School as those students are enrolled in dual enrollment and it is not an option for them to be on a flexible day. They must be present every day for the college courses. So we're requesting 50 slots for our comprehensive high schools and 25 for South Palm Gardens. This past year, we had graduates from this program three from Wesco High School, two from East, and two from South Palms. I'd like to share a story of two of them from Wesco High School, and this is exactly the type of program, this uh, type of student this program is designed for. They were a married couple, and they had a small child. The boy had to work all day, and the young lady stayed home with a the baby. They came to school after 5 o'clock when her mom was there to take care of the child, and then they were able to come to school, and they both graduated last spring. So Mrs. Morales was familiar with their story and shared the picture of them, and that's exactly the type of student we target with this. So even though we only had seven graduates, um, there are seven that may not have graduated without this option. And really, that's it in a nutshell. So do you have any questions or comments? Actually, it's that? a good program. You know, when you recover students that are over age, do you know out of those, like those uh, last year's participants, how many will be coming back? 
or you won't know until actually We won't they... know until we go into the lever recovery mode, That's which true. starts shortly. So Mrs. Brewer or Dr. Contu are already reviewing the lists of levers that we've identified that left us last year during the year that didn't finish. Um, and some of those students are on, some of those like 28 at Westco High School, they didn't all make it. So we will be inviting them back as and many as possible. Any uh, of those per, uh, were lacking tax? I know tax was... Uh, they don't have to take tax anymore. They're able to transition. Oh, that's right. And um, actually, uh, we did graduate a few students last year who were missing uh, one tax test. Correct. And they, we brought them in and uh, they went to the committee. So we were able to graduate a few. Good. I think it's a good program. Thank you. Any other questions? The you had, uh, what was the total that we're in last year? It was, um, let me back up was to that slide. Was it 872 or 28? 28, 9, and 7. Correct. Okay, so you, you already have those students, and I know that you said you don't know who's coming back. But we know who those students were that we need to look for and exactly. get them back in. So we already know who they are. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, make sure that we, we do it and, and not give up on them. No, we will not give up on them. Okay. We can be sure of that. <clears throat> And the state does track our five and six year completion rates, so we want them back, even if they didn't finish in four. Okay. Let's be flexible. Because that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the PowerPoint there. But any other questions? Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Okay, well, um, since that concludes the presentation on the Optional flexible school day program will move on to item number four public comments on the optional flexible school day program report. So at this time the public is invited to come up and, and uh, uh, comment, ask questions and uh, in reality during public comments it is different than during, the, during our regular board meetings in that uh, as a board, we're, we're able to talk back to you and, and give you answers to your questions. And during the school, school board, when it's a meeting, it's not an option. Then those are just comments. Am I correct, Ivan? Cool. Yeah, there can be a dialogue so long as it's related to the item that's on right. the agenda. Yeah, we, you, as long as we talk about this item, we can, we can talk about it back and forth. But during board meetings on, on comments, we cannot answer or not reply. So at this time, if anybody wants to come up and, and uh, make some comments on the flexible school day program, that's twice. Uh, I'll ask one more time. Is there anybody that wants to make a comment on the optional flexible school day program? Okay. There being none, I will move on to item number five, which is the adjournment. Time now is 5.45 and this uh, public hearing is closed. Okay, everybody ready to go, Andres? Yes, sir. Okay. Time is now 5.46. Today's date is uh, August the 13th, 2018. And at this point, we're going to start a workshop and uh, on the budget. Yes, sir. So, Dr. Canales. And Board of Trustees, uh, we do have the bu budget workshop. This is not the first one we've had for this year. Uh, Mr. Andres and his staff have worked really, really hard on balancing the budget, the proposed budget. <coughs> and he has the latest information for you today. I'd like to add that our business office did score a perfect score of 100 for uh, for how many years in a row? I forgot this, about 14 or 15. Yeah, for 14, for maybe almost 15 years in a row. So, Mr. Andres Sanchez. Thank you, Dr. Canales. Uh, Mr. Lopez, members of the board, uh, you have a copy of the presentation for the budget there. Uh, I'm going to try to highlight items that I haven't mentioned before, and some of them I will emphasize in, since this is the last budget workshop before the public hearing, which will take place next week. Uh, our federal funds, we were announced that they're going to get cut, so we're going to get some cuts on Title I regular. And uh, the Title Three, the bilingual ESL funds. So we'll, we'll, we're making adjustments to those budgets. On page three, uh, our budget is based on 15,905 ADA, which is pretty much what we had for the final ADA for the best four, six weeks 
our last school year, 2017-18. Our uh, <coughs> budget is based on certified property values released by the appraisal district of $2,319,417,743. Uh, there is an increase of 1.19% over last year's certified values. One thing that is important to mention is when we started the budget process, we were using preliminary values issued by the appraisal district in March. that were actually $2.4 so when we started with the budget, we had 100 more million to work with on our calculations for property taxes. When we got the values uh, after we came back from the break, we had to look at it and make some cuts, as you all remember I discussed. So we went through the budget and uh, used the new certified values, and that's what we're presenting now. Our tax rate, we're presenting, recommending a $1.15, 16 cents, a 114 on the M&R rate, and 2 cents in the INS rate. Our current tax collections are budgeted at 91 percent. Our goal is 93. Through July of this year, we have collected 94.91 percent, which is very good. And on the delinquent taxes, they're budgeted at 20 percent of the balance at the beginning of the year. The goal is 27. As of July 31, we collected already 27.86 percent. So we're above our goals on both of them. Uh, Allocations to the schools. We provide uh, elementary schools an allocation that they can, principals allocate it wherever they want it, working with their site based committee. And anything that is not related to payroll, custodial, maintenance, facility, anything else. Elementary schools get $120 per ADA, middle schools $135, high schools $200. We had done a survey of uh, schools in the Bringer One area. We got eight responses last time. I don't have a copy with me. But last time that we presented, there were two schools that had higher rates than we do, and the other five are lower. What the schools mentioned that the allocation they give to the school, they use bilingual funds, and all funds, ours are all local funds. Based on the uh, budget that we have, the circumstances we have, I believe the amount we're allocating this year are good. We were trying to raise them, uh, lower the, because our ADA is lower, and we have additional needs now with a flood and everything else, so <clears throat> that's the best that we could do for right now. Uh, we also have allocations for a uh, band, which are listed in the report that we have mentioned before. Uh, Ten capacitory funds budget uh, includes enough funds to provide for accelerated instruction of students that are at risk of dropping out of school. Uh, I had mentioned to the board before that our administration was conservatively estimating a $2 million surplus at the end of the budget year. The support actually went to 3.2 million. However, in uh, July, we brought an amendment to the board because we had to buy buses and vehicles, as you all remember. So we used about $5.9 million from fund balance for facilities to all the needs and 1535000 from local revenues from increased taxes and interest income. So with those calculations in mind, our surplus right now looks at 1665000 and this is a conservative figure. By the time we finish, we're hoping that it'll go up. You know, hopefully next month I can give you a better idea of what the surplus is going to be. Uh, on health insurance, we budgeted, uh, we budgeted an increase of $15 on the district cost. From, we went from 470 per employee per month to 485 per employee per month. On the third bullet, on the employee side, we have an agenda item to be presented at the meeting that recommends increasing the cost or contribution by employees to their insurance, like their premium, going, by, going up by $16 per month from $9 to $25. That will be an increase of $192 per year per employee. And that's also to help to the, raise the fund that we need for the health insurance fund. The budget includes, uh, as mentioned before, six resource offices that we had discussed that we would provide by once we got the two cents increase on the INS tax rate. It also has eight teachers budgeted for the full day pre-K. And as we need a teacher, we'll hire them. Right now, we're still working with the enrollment figures on that, but we have them in the budget. There is no money budgeted for facilities at this time. 
transfer to construction fund, and the interest income was increased in the budget by 220,000. The next chart shows that we have a total of 12 vacancies posted in the budget. There's three allocated to schools, two to East High School, one to Coya Middle School, a construction maintenance manager, and the eight teacher for full day pre-K. We have approximately 1.8 million in additional vacancies that um, are not posted in the budget that we might need this coming year. The next slide uh, emphasizes the. Come back to that one. Uh, yes, sir. What, what is, the vacancies? Of approximately, you said 1,800 additional vacancies? Is that no, a uh, million eight hundred thousand in vacancies. Right. Those were the ones that we didn't fill. Those are, the, are not included in here, yes, sir. Okay. Yes. The <clears throat> decrease in the appraised values when we did our calculations on the taxes lower our uh, property value, I mean, our, our property tax revenue in our state aid related to property taxes by almost 1.5 million. That's what this uh, chart emphasizes. A million 468,000 less revenue that we're going to get because <coughs> of the lower price value that we got. That's we had to make the cuts that we made. On the next slide, page 12. When I, the last time that I talked to the board, I was trying to recommend a $500 pay increase for all employees. The board wanted me to, I told the board, I'm going to go back and see what we can do, because at this time, at the last meeting, I didn't have money for a pay raise. So we went through, we made some adjustments, uh, rerun our budget figures and everything. So we were able to include a $750 pay raise for all employees. We have the eight full-day pre-K teachers, the six resource officers. We, on the changes or decreases that we made, I had a contingency allocated on the, I still have in the function 11. We cut it by $55,000. I still have about close to 300 and some thousand. I forgot the exact amount. Those amount that we use during the years, several items that we do, and so the amounts are not known exactly. We leave them in there until we need it. We, we are calculating from there. We had 200000 allocated to Function 36, which is used either for athletics or extracurricular activities, trips of students. We had to cut $200,000 from there. I had mentioned that I had allocated $275,000 for overtime in the transportation department. I had to remove that as well. And the Instructional Materials Allotment Committee approved to fund two instructional programs totaling $238,000. So by having the IMA uh, funding pay for those, we were able to remove them from the local maintenance budget. And those are the cuts that we had to make. On the positive side, we'd like to recommend to the board to approve uh, an additional one-time stipend for all employees <coughs> that will be paid in May of 2019, but it will be contingent on the district achieving an additional 145 ADA than what we have budgeted. We budgeted 15,905, and if we actually get a 16,050 ADA, we'll have money to pay an additional pay raise. <coughs> the recommendation is to pay additional $400 for teachers, 300 for administrators, and 150 for paraprofessional, many trades, and technical trade staff. And this is, again, if we get the additional idea, which I hope we can get it, we will be able to pay this stipend for everybody, and it will be paid in May. We wait till May because the ADA, we know by the end of, the middle of April, the end of the fifth, six weeks, we'll know whether we're going to achieve the ADA or not. At that time, we can tell the board, and they will run the calculations so we can pay it in May. So how many students did you say we needed for this year? 100 and what? More? Uh, 145 ADA. ADA. That's, I mean, <coughs> 145 students to come every day to school, basically. Correct. Correct. Uh -huh. That's in addition to what we budgeted, right? Yes, sir. Correct. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. Yeah, so the, the pay raise is for se everyone across the board. This is the 750. 750, yes, sir. Everyone. That's what's in the budget right now, yes. So no percentage, not just across no, the board? No, a set amount, yes. Is the one-time stipend in addition to the 750? Yes, sir, in addition. Okay. So as long as we hit ADA, you know, our, our principals, teachers, making sure our kiddos are here, and we hit that 16,050, uh -huh. that's where the additional kicks in? Yes, sir. Yeah. And everybody will get an amount. Okay. Mr. Sanchez, and the, yes, over, the overtime allocation for uh -huh. transportation, you don't see foresee that? Uh, 
uh, we might need it. One of the things that we're gonna do, uh, Dr. Rodriguez, and we bought new buses, we shouldn't need repairs. So the money will move from repairs to overtime. So yes. you're cut down. You're going to help in a way. We have you're cut buses. down from the repairs because of the warranty work. Right. Yes, sir. Exactly. You can allocate that money to go yes. in case we need it for the overtime. Yes, we had discussed that, Mr. Okay. La Rosa, and Dr. Canales on that. How much? How much were we uh, averaging or spending on on uh, maintenance work? Uh, I'm, I don't have a figure to tell you, okay. but I can put it in the update for that. So, Andres, on the co-curricular, is it? Minus 200,000, right? Yes, sir. But that doesn't include uh, the teams when they make the playoffs, correct? Or is it part of that? Some of that money goes there, yes, sir. Okay, but if, if uh, at the end, if they need additional money, we'll see, especially when they go to travel to playoffs, yes, uh, uh -huh. we'll have to provide that if yes, it's not on uh, the budget. As we go through the budget, uh, <laughs> in the, uh, as, as we go through the year, we'll see how the expenditures go, whether we use all the money that we have allocated in the budget. And right. Areas. I still have a couple of contingency accounts in the functions. Correct. I put about 10,000 in some functions. We have the school sometimes submit up an amendment to the board for 700, 300. Instead of bringing a lot of budget amendments, I pay them from those contingencies. I tell my staff, get it from there. That way we don't have additional amendments to the board. So if we don't so, use them, but this ha happens uh, in December or late November of the playoffs, so we'll have a better idea yeah. that we can use some of that money. And the last couple of years, both schools have done very well yes, advancing. Mm -hmm. So, you know. To just make sure we have that money uh, yeah, we'll, later. We'll work with them. Yes. Okay. Can you discuss a little more at length about the, your the administration's proposal to increase the employee premium to the health plan? Yes. Mike, want to help? <clears throat> um. Mr. Kennedy, uh, that information is actually, I have a, a presentation prepared on behalf of the superintendent's report. I can go through it now or wait till that happens. It's. Okay. Would members rather wait or do you want to hear it now? Or whatever questions you have, well, I, I, can, I can answer. What was the question again? One. Mr. De La Rosa mentioned he plans on making the presentation later on in tonight's. Well, meeting. you can give him a, a, a quick, quick answer. Uh, and then we can go in depth during the meeting. In a nutshell, we're estimating um, for next plan year, we're going to need approximately $17 million uh, to fund the plan for next year. Uh, right now, we've spent uh, approximately $15 million uh, on the plan. So um, based on the analysis and the trend, um, we haven't had an employee uh, increase in two years. So in order to kind of make sure we have enough in reserve and uh, build a, uh, you know, a good reserve uh, and not have to come back at the, you know, at the end of the year and fund, you know, like we had to do uh, last year and move, you know, $4 million into the health account because we're short. So we're adequately funding it. So it's still very fair and equitable. I know it's, a, it's an increase, but compared to other districts, we're still way below a lot of them. We have that difference in, the, in your presentation? It's there. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll wait, wait for more details in your other presentation. On page 13 at the bottom, we have a, we anticipate receiving an insurance settlement on buses and pickup trucks in suburbans of approximately $3.2 million. The next slide shows a uh, debt service fund. This is the fund where we use the money from the INS taxes to pay our bonds. Uh, we expect to have, by the end of the year, this year, $2.1 million in the fund balance. God bless you. And we're going to collect about $442,000 in taxes, 600000 on uh, state aid, EDA, and IFA funds. Plus interest in a transfer from the local fund, we'll have $4.1 million, and we'll pay $3,955,000 in bond payments. So we'll end up getting about almost 190000 at the end of next year on the INS fund. The next slide is the ADA, a breakdown of the ADA for the last seven years. The following is enrollment, also for the last seven years. We're looking at our calculation was to have 17,491 enrollment, peak enrollment. Right now, the enrollment we have is about 17,000, close to 400. So we're close, and we still haven't finished with all the 
uh, getting the numbers on the enrollment from students. And the last one is slide on the tax rate, which has been one of the lowest in the valley. One more slide, uh, I mentioned earlier. We will have next uh, month a public hearing, next month, next meeting, next week. At 5.30, a public hearing on the proposed budget and tax rate. We are advertising in the newspaper and the monitor on Friday. It has to be advertised at least 10 days before the meeting. So we did the advertisement. And then uh, after the public hearing, we'll have the special board meeting. And two items that will be included in there will be the approval of the budget for the fiscal year 2018, 2019, and the local, the general fund and the debt service fund. And we also have the proposed tax rate for <laughs> next fiscal year. And the, the last slide that I have there, I left you a separate uh, piece of paper there. The, it's a summary of all the funds the, uh, in the general fund, sub funds, local main energy, TEK, all the funds, all the way to food service included. Uh, either the, the budget is balanced. At the end, we ended up with about $55,000 surplus. So we added it to our contingency account on function 11. So when the school did money, like I said, we take it from there. So the total revenues is $169,942,000, almost 943000 in revenues. The expenditures are 169 million 43,000, and we'll transfer 900,000 to the INS fund, so we'll end up with a break-even budget. Any questions? Yes. Yes, um, sir. <clears throat> the total income or the total that we're getting is how much? 160, 169. 169 oh, million. Almost 170 million total. It keeps on going down <clears throat> every year. Well, uh, this usually goes up. This time, uh, ADA, as you'll remember, we budgeted less uh, ADA revenue. Last time we had 16,170, so it was about 2 million less than last year. Okay. So that is why it's lower. Is the lower ADA the cause of the lower federal funding we're going to receive next budget year? No, the state funds. Yeah, but what, the what, federal funds. What's the cause of the lower federal funds? The government, because they're making cuts. Okay. On the federal level. Yes. So how much did they cut for this coming year? The, the amount, oh, no, yeah, we, we the knew it was like 330000 in the Title One regular fund, yep. the Title 1A. Those are the two that we, we don't know the final number yet, okay. but that was the preliminary number they gave us to plan our budgets. Now, several years back, um, and I'm <clears> going that far, maybe five years ago. Okay. Was it about $175 million or $180 million that we were receiving? In our, for our, in our budget, Dr. Rivera, do you remember? I don't remember. I don't, don't remember the amount. That amount. I, I that remember we didn't do it. us being up either right at or, or close to $180 million. So now we're under $170, $170 million. You know, and, and I know that we, as a board, try to do everything we can. And, and you've been getting perfect scores on, your, on the work that you do in handling our money. So it's just that... It's tightening up. No, okay. What I want to say, this is just the general fund. Right. We still have federal funds. It's about 190 million, the whole budget. The whole budget is 190. Yeah. Okay. This is just the general fund. The board only has to approve the general fund <coughs> and the debt service fund. The federal okay. program do not get approved by the board. That's why we don't bring that discussion to the board. All right. I got you now. But really, every year has gone up. Yeah, a little bit, yes, sir. Yeah. The, the collections bit. already, except this year with the ADA, it's a little low. That's what hurt us. Yes. In fact, in this uh, form, the middle section says proposed budget 2017-2018. It had 172 million 82,000 in revenues. And the bottom, first, second column, bottom figure, says a decrease of 2 million 139,000, which was about 2 million on ADA. That's a comparison. Last year's proposed budget that the board approved to this one. Well, Dr. Rivera. You are. He's, he's well, well prepared. You and your staff. Thank you. Sir. <clears throat> I have one question. You, you went and cut some of the areas. Yes, and sir. You were able to get the salary increase up. So yeah. good job in, in reducing the budget. Thank you. I have one Mr. question. Yeah. I know. I know. Last last uh, the last workshop we had, I think you proposed that we would lose a thousand kids uh, due to the flood. Well, and yes, then sir. in asking some questions, I think we ended up with a number. <laughs> Sergio, do we have an update on that? On the, on the kids that were affected by the flood? Yes. Do we have an update as far as numbers, if anybody's leaving the, the school district? The last, uh, the, it, it's basically the, the
the last report that we had was that we had about seven students only that had moved out of the district. The rest remained. After contacting most of the families that were affected, right? Is that yes, correct? but and those and those students, uh, the staff is still uh, contacting them. Okay. Uh, some of those students who moved out, you know, since they do qualify for homeless, that's how we're trying to get them back. All right. And I appreciate yeah. you went down to 200 on the uh, yeah. proposal. Yeah. And again, this is a worst case scenario. We were right. to lose. We were looking at it and said, uh, by the comment they made and the phone call they made, that a lot of the parents were still coming back. So I said, well. Exactly. So. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned the number the first time when we had the initial numbers. We were to lose. Right. Because right. we had 5,000 students affected. And I do appreciate you this time you went with 200, so that's a little bit more, you know. Yes. But, uh, you know, that way we can tighten it up for the next <coughs> word, uh, workshop. So. Yes, sir. All right. Some will leave, but some will come into the district. Yes, sir. So it'll uh -huh. balance out. Yeah. Yes, Right now, working out, looking good. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Andres. Good job, Andres. Andres, Thank can you just get the uh, the number from Mr. Garcia on the savings from the maintenance? On, on what maintenance. Because um, we got new buses. So oh, have on the uh, maintenance, yes, prepared. So yes, can you get for Mr. Garcia if you have that number? Good evening, board, Dr. Canales. Uh, we get about 200,000, a little over 200,000, and, and we've been expanding all of it, actually, because we had an older, an older fleet. Um, but now we have also gotten the maintenance and energy management fleet, and that's where uh, nothing's been worked out yet, so I need to be uh, really advised to see where I'm gonna get the monies to do that, because we're not gonna completely not use anything. Okay. So, and we do, just to keep in mind, we did keep about 25 old buses, so we're still going to need some monies. Okay. Thank you. Good presentation. Good. Good job. Over time. Okay. Can we approve this next week? Next yes. Week. Next week is the final. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Any other questions? Good job, Alvis. There should just keep track of all the kids going to the idea, to the ELSA idea. Once the school year starts, how many from the district? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> the time is now uh, 610, and that concludes the uh, budget workshop. I need a couple of minutes, and then we'll start the regular board meeting. Uh, time is uh, 6:21. Today's date, August the 13th, 2018. And I call this a regular board meeting to order of the Wilsico Independent School District. Item number two is establishment of a quorum. Let the record reflect that we have a full quorum present. Item number three, opening prayer, Dr. Canales. Okay, Mr. Roblado will introduce our, the employee who will be saying the opening prayer. Good afternoon. This afternoon, the invocation will be delivered this evening by campus instructor, facilitator Araceli Chavarin. Please bow your heads with me. Lord of heaven, God of all creation, there is no one like you. You are the fountain of all wisdom and understanding. We humbly come before your presence to ask that you pour upon our superintendent, board members, and administrators wisdom from above. Wisdom to make tough decisions and to stand firm upon integrity. Wisdom to be good stewards of all finances and resources. But above all, wisdom to guide our precious students to fulfill their purpose in life. Your word tells us that everything we do, whether in word or action, must be done for your glory. I ask you, Lord, that your hand of love, mercy, and protection be upon all our teachers and our students as they come to the end of their summer vacation and that they return eager to learn and grow. Help us obtain strength and endurance to make 2018-2019 the greatest year of victory for Westlake ISD. In your precious name of Jesus, we ask all things. Amen. 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 Thank you. Moving on to item number four is Pledge of Allegiance, Texas Pledge, Dr. Canales. 
Mr. Robledo. Okay. Well, if I can have three members of the Wildcat Regiment, please stand, stand up as I introduce you. And they will be leading us in the, pe in the pledge. I would like to introduce, y'all can uh, face this way for right now. First of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Victoria Mena, who is right here. <laughs> Victoria is the daughter of Raymond and Adelia Mena. She is a senior at West Laco East High School and is the head drum major for the Wildcat Regiment. Victoria is a three-time Texas State solo and ensemble medalist, a UIL academic state medalist, a BPA national alternate, and a member of the National Honor Society and the Hispanic National Honor Society. Victoria plans to major in music at the University of Texas at Austin. How about a big hand for Victoria Mena? <laughs> and if her parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents? Up next, right here in the middle, we have Georgie Ann Gonzalez. And she is the daughter of George Gonzalez and Pauline Puente. She is a first assistant drum major for the West La Cuis Wildcat Regiment. Georgie is a state solo and ensemble recipient, a member of the National Honor Society and Astronomy Club. Georgie plans to study at the University of Texas at Austin and major in biology. How to big hand for Georgie. If her parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents? Yeah. Not here today. <laughs> and we also have here Lori Rodriguez, who is the daughter of Juan Rodriguez Jr. and Gracie Rodriguez. She is the second assistant drum major for the Wildcat Regiment. She is a two time all state solo and ensemble recipient. Lori is an honor student and is also a member of the National Honor Society. Lori also participates in HOSA and the Interact Club. After graduation, she wants to study at the University of Texas and major in biology. How to big hand for Lori. <laughs> and if her parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Her parents? Are they here? Okay, if everyone can please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee. Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. There's, we have something for you. I don't know if there's any money in there. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on to item number five. Awards and recognitions, Dr. Canales. Mr. Roblado, will you lead okay, us through Okay, tonight we have some uh, student recognitions. If we can bring out our students, these are AP Scholar students from West Laco East and West Laco High School. How to big hand as they enter the room. Okay, we have more AP scholars, but some of them have already graduated and gone on to college, and others are, are participating in either band or uh, are not present here today. So we're going to recognize those that are here today, but first, let me, say, uh, let me talk a little bit about this. So tonight we want to recognize several high school students who recently received academic recognition on the national level. The College Board Advanced Placement Program recently recognized several of our students for their exceptional achievement on the AP exams. These students took part in college level courses while still in high school to earn college credit, advanced placement, or both. A small percentage of the millions of students worldwide who took the AP exams performed at a sufficiently high level to earn AP Scholar Award. 
AP Scholars, as I say your name, if you could please stand forward so we can recognize you. AP Scholars com uh, completed three or more AP exams with scores of three or higher in subjects that include biology, chemistry, world history, and English literature. From West Laco East, those that are present here to, uh, tonight, we have Marcos Aleman. <laughs> we also have Sorada, Soraida Castillo. Daniel Cordero. Andrea Cruz. Joel De Los Santos. Jonathan Lozano. Victoria Mena. Humberto Romo. <laughs> Kayla Saldana. <laughs> Annalisa Salinas. <laughs> All right, did I get everybody from West Lacouise? Did anybody come in here late? Okay, good, good. All right, now let's move on to those that are present here from West Laco High School. And we have here on my list Stephanie Castillo. Maria Ontiveros. <laughs> Lisbeth Villanueva. <laughs> okay, am I missing somebody? I think I got, am I missing someone? I, I'm missing, there's two more, right? You got yours already, okay. All right, so I want to just make sure, because I know there's one more left. Now, two students earned the AP Scholar with Distinction Award. These students had an average score of at least 3.5 on all, P, all AP exams taken and scored three or higher on five or more exams. Students are Cesar Maldonado, who's not here, and we also have, we also have uh, Brianna Miranda. Thank you very much, and congratulations, AP Scholars. Good job. All right. Did you see a parent? Parents. Parents, parents I know you're here. If you could please stand and be recognized, all the parents. Okay, up next we have some more students to recognize. These are students who took part in the Texas Boy State Leadership Conference this summer. Come on in, how about a big hand for our Boy State participants. And we also have a member of the Girl State team that was also uh, taking part in this this summer. All right, so several high school students spent their summer forming political parties and passing laws as part of the 2018 American Legion Texas Boy State Leadership Conference. Our West Laco ISD delegates were selected on a highly competitive basis. We'll start off from West Laco High School. We have Daniel Mireles. From West Laco East, we have Daniel Magana. We also have David Magana. Robert Torres. Jet Casares. And Humberto Romo. The Texas State Boy Boys Conference was held June 10th through the 15th at the University of Texas at Austin campus. The conference offers a unique learn by doing environment where delegates run many state, district, county, and city offices representing fictional political parties. Now, two West Lacoise High School students were also part of the American Legion Auxiliary Blue Bonnet Girl State Conference this summer. 
And we have here with us Nadia Gutierrez. Uh, Rosie Garza was also a participant, but she is not here. They represented Westlaco during the 74th session of Girl State. These young ladies traveled to Texas Lutheran University campus in Seguin, where they formed cities, adopted charter, and elected city officials. Boy State and girls, girls and Boy State serve to empower young men and women to become community and civic leaders at all levels of government. Congratulations to you all. And uh, parents, if you're present, can you please stand and be recognized? Parents. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Okay. Up next, we would like to recognize some students who participate in the NHI summer program. You have a big hand for them as they enter the room. Congratulations goes out to four Westlaco ISD students who this summer participated in the National Hispanic Institute Collegiate World Series. NHI is a national leadership program that teaches speaking and debate skills through competition, the legislative process in which students run for state representative, governor, Supreme Court, and other elected offices. And before their senior year, they learn the college admissions process through inquiry-based learning, which engages students in an investigative and question-driven approach to mapping out the next 12 to 60 months of their lives. After four years of being involved in this organization, these students graduated from the NHI program, receiving a certificate and NHI cords to wear to graduation. Uh, we do have one graduate from West Lacoise who is not present, but I would like to recognize him. He is Javi de la Garza. And there were three students from West Laco High School, uh, not present here, Gabriela Sainz. And present here, we have Calista Robledo. And we also have here Tiana Guerra. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. And that concludes our awards and recognitions. Real quick, Dr. Canales, uh, I want to commend, of course, the principals and yourself and the central office for, we had over 40 that were AP scholars this year. So I commend to the, the teachers and the principals at each respective uh, high school. At this time, I'd uh, like to ask the board to change order of the day. And I'll require a motion for that, and we'll vote on it. Uh, what I'd like to do is go into closed session uh, right now instead of waiting till the end of the meeting. I move to change the order of the day. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to change the order of the day and go into closed session. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Okay, the time is... Um, Time is 6.36, and this board is going into close session. You need to read what's going to say discussed in closed session. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. We've got to read. Okay. In closed session, we'll be discussing personnel matters. Texas Government Code 551.074. Item number one, employment of personnel. Item number two, resignations. Item number three, deliberation regarding the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, Texas Government Code 551.074 and 551.071. Item A under that is superintendent's recommendation for the position of principal for Westco East High School. Item B, consultation with attorneys regarding A, a pending, pending or contemplated litigation. 
Item B, a settlement, offer, or C, a matter in which the duty of the attorney of the West Coast Independent School District under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Texas Government Code 551.071. Again, the time is um, 6.38, and we're going into closed session. Time now is uh, 721, and we're back in open session. Items discussed in uh, closed session were A, personnel matters, Texas Government Code 551.074. Item number one, employment of personnel, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, I move that you approve the employment of personnel as discussed in closed session. Move to approve. Second. Second. I have a motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew. Uh, is there any further discussion? There will be none. All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. <clears throat> motion carries. Item number two, resignations, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, I'm recommending that the board approve the mid-contract resignations subject to finding suitable replacements as applicable, applicable and discussed in the closed session. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew on the, to approve the resignations. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Moving on to item number three, deliberation regarding the, the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, Texas Government Code 551.074 and 551.071. Item A under this Category is superintendent's recommendation for the position of principal for Wesco East High School. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, for the position of the principal for Wesco East High School, I am recommending Dr. David Gamboa. I'll move to approve. Second. second. <clears throat> we have a motion by Oscar Caballero and a second by Patrick Kennedy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item B, consultation with attorney regarding pending or contemplated lit litigation. B, a settlement offer. Or C, a matter in which the duty of the attorney of the West Coast D under the Texas disciplinary rules of professional conduct of, of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with the Chapter 551 Texas Government Code 551.071. Dr. Canales. Uh, this is a no action. No action item. Okay. This time we will move back to the regular items as they were presented on the agenda. And the next item we have is item number six, public comments. Today we have two people that signed up for public comments. First one is uh, Sergio Lopez, I'm mean, excuse me, Sergio, Sergio Garza. Mr. Garza? You'll, you, uh, I'm going to need your address before you take off, and then uh, you're going to have five minutes, but I have to read something to you before you start talking. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Mm. You are to address only matters that concern the school district. You are not to attack any district employee or board member. We will not tolerate any disruptive behavior by any member of the audience. If you do not, do not abide, you will be directed to cease and leave the building. Crystal clear. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, we'll be taking um, the time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the reason for being here today is to express some concerns on AC work on campuses. Uh, the, the, the temperature here today is very adequate, uh, but imagine if we were sitting here and there was no AC work, or if no one had thought that we, we, we should have uh, portable AC units, right? So that's, that's what we're talking about here. First and foremost, it, is, it only makes sense that AC work in the commercial building of any kind should be done when it's not being uh, occupied. Uh, it is not, this is usually the best time to do repairs. But if nobody thought of this, and if nobody is, uh, is occupying the building, then it is the responsibility of central office st staff to provide adequate working conditions. Remember, we are in the US, we cannot have teachers that are not getting paid to be there teachers that, that are volunteering their time to prepare for a new school year, 
teachers that are there for the kids, sweating in closed campuses, and some even getting sick over the non-ventilated uh, areas. Now the custodians have personally have seen them. They're out there working. They're cleaning the, the, the carpets. And they're cleaning the tile. They're doing what they should be doing, performing their duties. But it is very hot in these uh, campus, campuses. <coughs> Excuse me. Central office personnel should have uh, portable units ready for staffers. Central office were the only ones that knew when these uh, projects were going to start. Uh, when contractors were scheduled to be there. So AC units are shut down and no units are in place. We live in South Texas. It's very hot here. Temperatures are over 100 degrees. It is a closed, non-ventilated building, as I had stated earlier. Who's thinking, of these, process who's thinking these processes through? Uh, when the ACs were shut off, when the, ACs, when the ACs, ACs were shut off, people were told that it would be two to three days to get the AC system uh, working. However, today marks the day, the third week, uh, and there is still no AC in certain areas of several campuses. We have heard many reasons why, and they, I mean, they go on and on. It really doesn't matter why. Uh, uh, some, of, some people are saying that the, the wrong units were ordered. But all we're trying to do is just get the AC units back up and working so that the teachers and the, the staffers that are there that are forced, I mean, not that are forced, that have to be there so they can perform their duties. That's all that we're asking. My voice is a little scratchy because of my allergies. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, so that's all we're asking for, that, that the AC units out there, that they get, you know, they, 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 uh, they hurry up. I'm not sure what the, the, what's holding up the process. But uh, once again, this, this, the AC here is adequate. What if we didn't have AC units here? Uh, everybody would be a little bit more uncomfortable. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a good meeting if, if, a, if the AC wasn't working. Uh, on, on a different note, on uh, on the agenda, I noticed also that on letter H, that we're wanting to borrow more money again. Uh, I'm not sure. It doesn't say there what the monies are for that we're trying to borrow money for, but um, it doesn't even say how many millions we're trying to borrow. But uh, it, under letter H. It says there that they're, they're trying to get some insurance certificates, probably, you know, that's usually trying to borrow money. Um, once again, we don't know how many, what that money is for. Uh, we know that the buses were flooded earlier in the, in the, in the year. And um, actually, that, that just brings back a whole different story there that we've, a lot of people out in the community, and sometimes people don't say anything, but maybe this is the right time to say it. They, um, the word is that we know that the area where the buses are, we know that, they, that it floods out there. And there was a lot of times that the warnings were out that there was going to be a lot of rain. So Mike, well, I can ask a question. But um, I guess the, the, the issue is that those buses should have been moved. I mean, we feel, the community feels that the buses should have been moved. And if the buses would have been moved, we wouldn't be trying to get more money to, to buy more buses. And that is... Um, uh, that is unfortunate because the only one that pays at the end are the are the taxpayers, and uh, I feel that it was something that that, that you know we could have we could have definitely uh, avoided. So in closing, I would just like to tell the parents of Westlaco that um, you know to remember that that we need to be out there and and, and pick people out there that are going to uh, advocate for our kids, and more imp importantly, watch the funds uh, how we're spending them. Very important that we're spending our funds correctly. And like I said, a lot of people call me all the time. I try, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, it's not my battle to fight. But we, I do get a lot of phone calls, and I don't know why, but a lot of people call and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. Same thing with the, with the AC units. People were calling and saying, you know, we, uh, why don't you go up there and say what needs to be said. But um, so there it is. Nothing hard. I mean, the AC units, nothing hard. If we would have planned better for it. We wouldn't have the situations that we have in some of the schools. Thank you. Thank you. That is that is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next uh, person that uh, signed up for public comments is Renee Dyer. Okay, let me read to you the, the same I, uh, 
start to the to the to your comments. You are to address only matters that concern the school district. You are not to attack any district employee or board member. You will not tolerate any disruptive behavior by any member of the audience. If you do not abide, you will be directed to cease and leave the meeting. Uh, I know we, that's not going to happen, but I had to read it. <laughs> okay, so uh, you have five minutes, and, and you can start with uh, your address and, and your name. My name is Renee Dyer. I live at 1550 South Milano's in Westlaco. Thank you. I had several cards prepared, um, but I just want to maybe step back and thank you. Um, Dr. Canales, when you send out an email, I don't know if you uh, are aware, but the tagline in your email, the quote by Margaret Mead, it says a lot. Um, and tonight you guys did what the, Dr. Canales' quote uh, embodies. Uh, the quote by Margaret Mead reads, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, <laughs> committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Tonight, your decision in selecting the best principal for Westlaco East High School has changed the world for everyone at Westlaco East High School. And we thank you for that. And we appreciate the thoughtful consideration you gave to the candidates to lead us through the rest of this century. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number seven, superintendent's report, Dr. Canales. This evening we have two items to report. The first is insurance and the sec second update on construction projects. So Mr. De La Rosa will lead us through the first one. Good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Canales. As we mentioned during the budget workshop, uh, Mr. Kennedy asked some questions about the uh, contributions uh, to the health insurance. Uh, normally, I do present as part of the superintendent's report on behalf of Dr. Canales um, uh, relevant in insurance information, if you will. So I decided to um, break this report down a little bit differently uh, this time for you all and just to kind of give you an idea of where we're at as far as funding and where we need to be for the next year. So if you look at the spreadsheet here, uh, the middle column indicates what the current TPA, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, had projected. And we based our funding verse, uh, based on those numbers. And the next column, we have actual what we spent through July. So as of that, we funded approximately $16.2 million. And that varies, uh, and that, that comes from the employer contribution, which is 470 per employee per month that the district makes. And then what the employees pay for their dependents and if they decide to upgrade their plans. So one of the things we had to consider is, of course, the run out. So the, at the... Uh, at the time the fiscal year started, we uh, didn't have an idea where we were going to be at as far as runout from the prior TPA. So the runout is going to be your claims that, of course, uh, we stopped paying on August 31st with the prior TPA, but those are the claims that were incurred, say, in August, so you, so you still have to leave some room for that. So I came up to about $1.1 million. Um, Blue Cross estimated that we would pay $9.4 million. Uh, and I don't know if you can follow along with the little arrow here. $9.4 million in actual medical claims. Estimated prescription drug costs, a little under $4 million, and of course the admin fees. So they came out to about $16.1 million. We funded based on that number. Uh, and then of course uh, with the um, um, run out uh, that we found out later, we, we saw that it was going to come out to about $7.2 in expenditures. So we did transfer some money. Uh, and the fund, uh, into the health insurance fund, if you recall, there was an agenda item that was uh, back earlier in the year. We transferred about $4 million. So some of the money to cover the run, run out was uh, included in that transfer. So if you go through actual through July, of course, you take in your run out, which is 1.1. We've actually spent uh, $8.1 million in actual claims, medical claims. Uh, we're estimating anywhere from 800 thousand to a million dollars in the month of August. And I said that's always a pretty heavy month because, you know, uh, people get things done over the summer, procedures and so forth, and we usually get see those bills in, in August and then, of course, going into September and October. Uh, we spent $3.1 million in prescription drugs. Uh, we're estimating we're going to spend about half a million dollars in August. Uh, admin fees, uh, so far we spent about $2.9 million. Remember, our admin fees are what we pay to Blue Cross to administer the plan, what we pay for stop-loss premium, 
Uh, and of course, the runout fees that we paid to the prior TPA, of course, are included there as well. Uh, we're estimating a stop loss return of about $85,000. That's a very, very conservative number. It's going to be significantly more. So right now we're looking at a total estimated for the fiscal year of about $16.7 million. Okay. Um, if you take out the freight as run out, if you want to see what actually we've spent so far at, on Blue Cross, they said actually they're coming in for about $15.6 million. So right now we're an estimated shortage. Like I said, this is very, very preliminary of about $576,000. It should be significantly less because we should see more stop loss coming. But again, we figure that we need to be at about $17 million funding okay, for the next fiscal year based on what we're paying out this year and in preparation for next year. Um, so that is where we're at right now as far as the funding question. So this is, this is the rationale to fund you know, the increased employee contribution is this kind of ties into that where we say we need about $17 million for next year. That's what we're anticipating. Uh, overall, when you put in all the apples or in all the oranges, when you put everything together, um, last year at this time we spent just over $16 million, and right now, like I said, right here, $15.2 million so far. So that's a decrease of about $830,000 less that we spent last year. Um, there have been some questions about, you know, well, you know, as far as medical claims, it's about $1 million less so far. And the question has been asked, well, you know, why is this, you know, why are we spending less money? This is kind of one of the reasons, and this is some, uh, some reports that came in. What I had mentioned to the board in the past is we have a lot less severe claims this year versus last year. Last year was the perfect storm. So these are all the individuals uh, that we have paid over $50,000 uh, this year so far. This report reflects last year. So as you can see, there's significantly more. There's about 47 uh, individuals that hit about that hit over $50,000 in medical claims. Uh, so that's really the the main reason why we're seeing the the decrease. Because you see here, uh, total paid, I think that's 4.1 million dollars, and then so far here it's 1.7. So that would be your 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 major reason why we're seeing a, a decrease in our medical claims or that we're paying less claims but regardless of that we still need to make sure that we fund adequately so we won't have to transfer money in like we did uh, last year mike just out of uh, the screen that's up right now how obviously i can't see any numbers or anything like that but how many claimants is that i think we counted 37 dr canales earlier I, I might, let me see how my notes my notes here and I and should have told you that. Oh, I have it right here, yes. 37, 37. versus and 17 this year. 17? Yes. The difference is about 3 million? More or less, yes, sir. More or less. Okay. Thank you, Mike. And again, can't and see the screen. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. it, it trying to didn't quite translate over well. Uh, but that, that is this part of that. This is this portion of the report, if anybody has any questions. Mike, what has been our budget in Did previous years? Up? This year, you're, you're projecting 17 million. Well, where were we at? Uh, 13 to 14 million. 13 to 14. Yeah. And, and I have a history of it if you'd like it. I can give it to you in the update. But like I said, can last year. Can put it in the update? Sure. Last year, like I said, was the perfect storm. So we had, we had, a, we had a critical loss here last year. So that is really like the, the, the difference that we're looking at here. And when you see the medical claims, you can see spikes. And then you can see now that they're pretty much started to. Do you have a copy in. of that? Do we you don't? You don't have it? Oh, I'm so sorry. To start all over. The order of the day threw me off, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Small numbers here, Mikey. <laughs> and I don't mean I mean little. <laughs> I'll get you the the I'm full size glass. copy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't glass. I didn't print it. I apologize.
Well, um, while we move on, I'll get you all big, uh, bigger copies. Okay. If we proceed to the meeting. Is that it for your part? That's, that's it for my part. Unless you all have any other questions. Newsletter? When the employees come back, we'll put it out because we have a lot of information to, to let everybody know. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Anybody have any questions on, on this part so far? Okay. Let's move on. Okay. The next part of, of our report is on construction updates. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Rosa. Good evening, Dr. Canales, uh, Mr. Lopez, members of the board. I'm here to present uh, uh, on the construction projects that we have going throughout the, the district. However, uh, considering that it's a, a very extensive uh, and quite long agenda, I would ask you, I uh, believe you have your printouts of the presentation. If you uh, want to take a look at the presentation, I'm glad to wait a couple of minutes or so if you have any questions. I'll ask, is there any issues that you're having at this time with any of the projects that are under, underway? Nothing at all. Um, as far as the schedule goes, we are on schedule. Um, as far as uh, the air conditioning, uh, they have started uh, the air conditionings as of uh, uh, last week. They started some of the units. I know we had registration last week on Tuesday, so they, they uh, made it an effort, the contractor, to get those units in the cafeteria started last week. Uh, and so part of the process involves that the factory come over and do the startup to ensure that the warranty is, is, uh, is uh, uh, obtained and not, uh, 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 for lack of another word, uh, that we don't default on the warranty. But uh, other than that, as far as the schedule goes, even the field house, uh, I believe uh, the contractor has uh, caught up with the, the schedule already. I'm going to go looking at project number nine, which is the HVAC replacement. Mm -hmm. It's at two of the schools, and are the principal? I can't see that far. Uh, are the principals here? Miss Good. I can't see. But the principals for yeah the, for, for Silva and Gonzalez. I yes. can't see that far. Here. They're they're here. Since y'all have had registered, yeah, why don't y'all come up, please? Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Just out of curiosity, just with our systems, uh, when we had registration last week, uh, the only ones back right now is just your administrative staffs, right? Office staff, oh, our counselors, office staff. Li library staff, and office. So, yes. where your libraries, AC is working, and your office staff area working. Our office staff is our cafeteria. They got going for us in the counseling department. We have uh, portables because their their unit is part of the unit that's being replaced. Our library has been out since before the summer, but that's a totally different situation, and it's also being replaced. So they have, they. You know, energy management was really good about getting us portables and fans and okay I mean, we're, so we're, during your registration did you have any complaints by parents or or staff no that, our cafeteria was working they, they working. got it to work yes. Sila, okay the same same exact uh, scenario um, registration was great it was very cool in the uh, cafeteria um, the op the uh, library area is down but they've got fans portables in there portables in the counseling area as well great I, I just you know, uh, I know a concern was brought up earlier uh, with our systems, but I want to thank energy management for which I do to make sure that the parents were okay and your staff is okay while well, those that need to be there are there working in a good working environment. And they've been working in and out of our office because our office mm -hmm. area is a different unit. So yeah. they've been working out of our office as well. So. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Medical, we have several projects. Uh, one question that I have for you is, um, will all our facilities be ready to go come day one of school involving any, anything that's, that's uh, construction project related? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we are, again, this is one of the most critical ones, the air conditioning. Right. And we've been working with the contractors. As a matter of fact, we're, we're uh, pushing them to, to get all of them started by Wednesday, which is when teachers come back. I know the principals uh, have asked me to uh, to convey to the contractor that the most critical one is the libraries because of the staff development, and uh, and that's where all teachers are going to be uh, gathering, and so they've done that already. 
uh, and they, they will continue working to, uh, now through Wednesday. Um, a couple of, um, of things uh, or items that I need to bring up uh, is that there were some issues with the uh, library unit for the unit in Gonzales, but there, as, as of today, they were working on getting it up there. They will uh, get it up there by tomorrow and, and push to get it started by Wednesday as well. The, the kitchen units are the others who, uh, that needed to be uh, uh, modified, per se, the, the mounting or the installation of the units, and they're working on those as well. Okay. Are they working late? Yes. Okay, because there's no room for excuses. It needs to be ready. Yes. No, they have been working late. I've gotten, again, several calls from the principals concerned at times that the doors, you know, who's going to lock them and so forth, that they notice that the people are out there and they're coming in on weekends. And, and so, yes, they are. Okay. All right. I'll just stay on top of it because that's, well, of course, we have to get all our schools ready, but uh, uh, especially with the air conditioning. I mean, those right. these are new build and newer buildings. There's no not that many windows. So, right. and there's, again, no room for excuses. It has to be done. Yes, sir. Uh, does anybody have any other questions on any of the projects? For next, our next meeting, Dr. Canales, I, I, we, I want the architects to come and make a presentation of the ones that are ongoing. Sure. Okay. Can do that. The next regular meeting. Next regular meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Medical. Okay, we're moving on to item number eight, uh, consent agenda. And I'll start at my left, Dr. Rivera. No. No. Nothing. Pull. Oscar? No, sir. Andrew? No, sir. Patrick? No, sir. Okay, our superintendent has several items that, that we're going to pull that uh, need clarification, and I'll let her name them. Okay, first of all, just clarification for the well, minute. We have to take a motion. Okay. Make a motion to tell me wh which items they are. Okay, it's uh, consent A. Okay. D and B2. B2? V as in Victor, two. Okay. Th those are the three items? Mm -hmm. Okay, I so I to approve the consent agenda with the exception of A, B, and V, A, D, and V2. Second. We have a motion by Andrew and a second by Oscar to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item A, D, and V2. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Dr. Canales. Okay. Go ahead. The, the first, for clarification on A, the approval of the minutes, um, on page 10, we don't provide transportation if students live, in, live within two miles. It, it indicates that, that we do. So if they're within a two-mile radius, we don't provide transportation unless there's a hazardous route. So that's the first one. For D, this is for the um, renewal fees to participate in Region 1's Library Service and Media Cooperative. Just to make it clear, it says ADA, and it has 17,100, I believe, in 52. That should be enrollment, not the word ADA. And then in V2, uh, the second ranked uh, vendor, this is for serving counter replacements for Armando Cuerda Middle School proposal. The Recommendations stay the same in all of these. This is just the second rank had 297 points and not 500, not 500 and some. It was, it was indicating what you got. But it doesn't change the it outcome. It doesn't change any actions. It's just points just of clarification typo. on the typos. I move to approve content agenda items A, D, and V2. Second. Okay, a motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew to approve items A, D, and V2 on the consent agenda. I will clarify that uh, I move to approve those items as clarified by the administration. Correct. Okay, we have a motion to approve the items A, D, and V2 as clarified by uh, administration. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Uh, before I move on, uh, it's a little matter for, for the records. Uh, let the re record reflect that Isidro left the meeting at 7.33. Okay, so that takes care of that. Okay, moving on to item number nine, discussion items. Item A, first reading of policy update 111 from the Texas Association of School Boards, TASB. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, uh, this... Um Update 111 from the Texas, from TASB, uh, centers on eight 
local policies. Mr. Garcia is going to quickly walk us through the policy changes, and this is a first reading, so no action is required. Thank you, Dr. Canales. Good evening, uh, Mr. Lopez, members of the board. Uh, as Dr. Canales mentioned, this is the first reading of uh, TASB uh, policy update 111. There are 57 legal policies included. There's eight local policies. Board action will be needed to approve the local policies after the second reading. I'm going to quickly review the local policies and staff is here uh, to answer any questions that the board might have. So the first local policy is BBD local, and that has to do with board members' training uh, and orientation. And basically it says that the law requires the board president to announce board member continuing education status at the last regular board meeting. Then we have CAA local. This has to do with fiscal management goals and objectives, specifically financial ethics. Uh, and this is recommended to clarify that reports of suspected impropriety may be made to a person who has authority to investigate the alleged activity, including the other individuals listed in the policy, and not, uh, and not only to certain persons or peace officers, a, uh, a, cr a crime witness at the school. CJA local has to do with contracted services, uh, criminal history, and this authorizes the district employee in charge of a facility to determine whether an employee of a contracting or subcontracting entity who does not have the required criminal history re review uh, be permitted to enter the facility in an emergency. The next policy is DH local. This is a, a, in this policy, a district employee who holds a Texas hun, uh, handgun license can store a handgun or other firearm in a locked vehicle in a district parking area provided the handgun or firearm is not loaded and not in plain view. However, the back and forth between state and federal law permits a district to revise this policy to allow such an employee to have a loaded handgun or firearm in their parked vehicles. We would need to contact our TASB policy consultant, consultant to revise uh, this local policy. The next uh, policy is DHE local employee uh, standards of conduct, searches and alcohol drug testing. And in this policy, the district may remove from duty and require testing of an employee if there is reasonable suspicion that the employee is under the influence of alcohol or drugs used uh, in violation of this policy. And it also addresses the consequences if the employee refuses to comply with the testing. The next one is DI local. Uh, this policy is recommended for deletion as a content is adequately covered through the district DH legal and local policies. The FE, FEA local has to do with attendance, compulsory attendance. And in this case, the policy requires a district to excuse a student 17 years of age or older for up to four days during the student's enrollment in high school to pursue military enlistment. And finally, the last policy is GKA local. This is community relations conduct on school premises. And basically, it's the same as a DH local about the handguns, uh, except that this is for community. So those are the eight local policies uh, for first revision. Or uh, we will bring it to you uh, a second time, and then you can take action on that. If there are any questions, I'm here as well as administration. Uh, we can answer your questions at this point. This is the first reading, right? This is the first reading, yes, sir. They're all very clear. Yeah, they're very clear. Okay. Well, that's a Thank lot of work you. to go through these. Thank you for your work yeah. on this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item B, interim financial report for 11 months ended July 31st, 2018. Dr. Canal. Mr. Andres Sanchez will uh, be presenting this information again. For this one, there is no action required. Yes. Mr. Lopez, members of the board, Dr. Canales, for the 11 months ended July 31st, uh, in the general fund, out of $174.8 million, we have received, or have receivable in our books, $169.5 million. That represents 96.9% of our budget. We had uh, received most of the budget uh, revenue we had budgeted. On expenditures and all the functions together, 
Out of 182.8 million, we have expended or encumbered 150.7 million. The other percent is 82.4%. And uh, in the general fund, do you have any questions? So at the end of August, August 31st, what do you anticipate the percentage left over? Uh, percentage? Mm -hmm. On the total budget? Well, um, hmm. You'll spend all of it? No, no. We That's what I mean. Yeah, 93, 94% at the most. We got to do payroll plus additional days for the, that belong to next year. We have to acc accrue. So you anticipate and, how much left over? I had mentioned earlier that it would be about uh, an additional 1.7 right now, <laughs> or left from here. It'd probably be more, but right now, I don't to give you a number that's going to be too high and I'm going to be off. But at least 1.7. Hopefully, we can get it up to 2, 2.5, or even more. Uh, but at the end of the month, uh, we'll have a better idea on it. So that's when we get all the invoices that we're going to pay, items that we'll receive. If they don't get received this year, belong to next year. So we'll have a better idea how much appeals we're going to have to pay, which we're going to close. So we have better numbers for that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? That's it. Thank you. Item C, pres presentation of 2018 anticipated collection rate of property taxes for fiscal year 2018-2019. Dr. Canale. Um, Board of Trustees, no action is required. Uh, we recommend that you review the 2018 anticipated collection rates for property taxes for fiscal year 2018-2019. This Sanchez. is a report that the tax assessor collector has to make to the tax entities. And they're certifying through this uh, <clears throat> agenda item that the estimated collection rate for the year 2018, which is for fiscal year 2018-19, is uh, projected at 100%. And since last year, they projected it also at 100%. Uh, there are no excess debt tax collection that need to be reported in Schedule B for the 2017 debt service report. It's a report that the tax assessor of the county has to do, but they have to report to every entity. That's all that report is. Okay. Okay. Non action? Yes. Okay. Item D Acknowledgement of Hidalgo County Tax Office Report for July 2018 Current and Delinquent Taxes. Yes. Uh, for the through July 31st, again, on the current taxes, the original levy was 26145000 We have collected 24866000 There have been some adjustments uh, throughout the year. We are right now at 94.91% collections. We had budgeted 91. Uh, last year, we collected 94.26. So we have collected 0.65% more than last year. On delinquent taxes, out of uh, 4297000 we have collected 1,131,000. That represents 27.96%. Last year, we collected 25.44, so that is 2.5% more than last year. Again, our goal was 20% only. Our goal was 27, we budgeted 20, so we have collected 8% more on the Good. revenues this year. Good, that's Good. it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Andres. Moving on to item number 10, discussion and possible action items. Item A, discussion and possible action to approve an order calling for the November 6, 2018 WSD school board election. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, I'm recommending that you approve an order for the Wesco Independent School District school board election to be held on Tuesday, November 6, 2018 for the purpose of electing four members of the Board of Trustees of the Wesco Independent School District. And the, and the places are place four. The office is currently held by Dr. Jaime Rodriguez. Place five, that office is held by Mr. Andrew Gonzalez. Place six, the office is held by Mr. Oscar Caballero. And place seven, the office is held by Mr. Isidoro Nieto. Uh, the order has been reviewed and approved by our school attorney. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Rivera and a second by Dr. Rodriguez to approve the calling of the order for the November 6, 2018 WISD school board election. Is there any more discussion? Good luck. <laughs> okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item B, discussion and possible action to endorse a nominated individual from another school board within our TESB district to fill a position on the TESB board of directors. Board of Trustees, I recommend that you consider endorsing a nominated individual from our TASB district to fill a position on the TASB Board of Directors position A. 
If the board elects not to endorse an individual, no action is required. If you do, action is required. We have two candidates for our area, Patricia Ocaña from Mission Consolidated Independent School District and Mr. Oscar Riojas from Mercedes ISD. I'll make a motion to nominate Oscar Riojas, Mercedes ISD. I'll second. A motion and a second to nominate Oscar Riojas for nomination for Tesby District to fill a position as Tesby Board of Directors. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item C, discussion and possible action to designate a delegate and an alternate representative to serve on the 2018 TASB Delegate Assembly. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, I recommend that you designate a delegate and alternate representative to serve on the 2018 TASB Delegate Assembly, which is scheduled to meet during the TASB TASA Conference held in Austin, Texas on September 27th through 30th, 2018. Okay. Uh, Dr. Rivera, you did this uh, a couple of years back. Uh, or, or you were nominated. I don't even know. You didn't come to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come to the meeting. <laughs> Not the meeting. <laughs> Motion to approve. Well, <laughs> well what, do you want it? I'm okay. Yeah. You want to take it? Okay. I'll make a motion to nominate Dr. Richard Rivera as our delegate. Okay. Uh, I, let me add, if you can add uh, Isidoro as a backup. As he was walking out, he, uh, mm -hmm. he, he and said he was Let me include interested. Isidoro Nieto. As, yeah. as, as an a alternate. Yep. Yeah. Second. Okay. So we have a motion to nominate Dr. Rivera as the delegate and then Isidoro as the serve as a alternate. backup delegate as an alternate. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Yes. So we have Dr. Rivera and Isidoro. Okay, and item D, discussion and possible action for the board to approve the memorandum of understanding between West Coast Independent School District and South Texas College STC to offer certification through a phlebotomy, phlebotomy program. Board, board of Trustees, we have a partnership with South Texas College for West Coast East High School and West Coast High School. The students enroll in practical courses of health science. They receive knowledge, curriculum, and skills and continuing ed education units so that they can become certified in the practice of phlebotomy. Uh, upon acquisition of this certification of completion and endorsed by the National Health Association, students will be qualified and eligible to be gainfully employed upon in any healthcare industry upon completing. Uh, we are recommending that you approve this memorandum of understanding. If you have any questions, we have so Ms. Moved. Avila. Second. Is this? We have a motion by Andrew. And the second by Dr. Rodriguez to approve the memorandum of understanding between West Coast ISD and South Texas College to offer the certification through a February program. Okay, in discussion, Patrick, go ahead. Is this money already budgeted? Or do it's, we have to reallocate funds? She's covered. It's, it's covered through CTE funds budget. and it's three hundred twenty-two fifty per student. Okay. Well, as long as it's already budgeted, it's, it's a budgeted. good idea. It's budget. I already budget. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ms. Avila. <laughs> it's a great idea. Is this something continuing or have, did we have this before or is this new? Is it brand new? How do, how do we decide on these uh, programs? Is it just uh, on a need base? <coughs> you know, is it? It's, you, we look at, <laughs> yeah, well, let Ms. Avila. Ms. Avila, will you? With the new accountability, it's on the state and federal uh, accountability list, so we're trying to get the students certified for state accountability as well. Okay. Can we look at the, the workforce and the demands in well, different industries? Well, most definitely, industry and so also for the accountability, it helps count the campuses as well. But that's first and foremost, yes, most definitely. Okay. What, Thank you, Mr. What grade is this offered to? It's practical. It's in practicum, so it's usually the seniors. Seniors. They've got to be 18, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. <laughs> Item E, discussion possible action to approve the optional flexible school day program for the 2018-2019 school year. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, this was covered in the public hearing earlier this evening. We are, I am recommending that you approve an optional flexible school day program for the 2018-2019 school year for students who are at risk of dropping out of high school. So move. Second. 
Motion by Andrew and a second by Patrick to approve the optional flexible school day program for the 2018-2019 school year. Is there any further discussion? Okay, we just had a workshop on this, and uh, it's, it's a public hearing, and it's a, a good thing. We're able to recover children that uh, would have not have graduated had they not gone through this program, and and I love this program. I think there were several discussions on it as to the positives <coughs> on this, no negatives. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item F, discussion possible action to amend the district's health benefits program employees contribution. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, as we all know, the cost of health care continues to rise dramatically. Uh, however, the district has not adjusted its contribution levels to account for the trend increase of 10% to 12% each year. Um, even so, we are, we are recommending that you approve the employee contribution level, and this is increasing from the base of, is it $9? Mr. Del Rosa, will you help me out with this yes, one? To, to $25. So it's about a $16 increase to the employee-only base plan, and then everybody else will see about a $25 increase per month. And if you look at the attachment, and I'll put it up here so you all can see it. Downloaded it. As I mentioned in the in the superintendent's report, we need to uh, we're anticipating to, to fund 17 million dollars uh, for next year's plan. So these are the way the numbers are broken down here, and it comes up to about 17.1 million dollars overall. With this is of course with the district contribution increasing, which will be part of the budget meeting uh, next week. Mike, last year we I know we were freight, they didn't pay anything. Then we went up, and then we funded the account, <coughs> and we're going to increase again. Just so that we're aware of how much more we're putting into it for this coming year. The employer contribution equals about $400,000. Uh, and then what we're going to put in, the, the district is going to contribute about uh, $13.6 million, which is this total right here. Uh, the employees through dependents uh, and, of course, high electing higher uh, plans fund about $3.5 million okay. uh, for a total of $17.1 million. And last year, we increased the district's contribution. Right. We did not increase the, employer, the employee. employee contribution. Excuse me. So last year, we went from 400 to 420 or something? We went from, Andres, help me out. I think we went from 430 to 470. And then now, with next year's budget, we'd like to go to 485. 485. And, and of it's course, only also a $16. Increase for our employee? It's $16 for the employee only on the base plan. On Everybody the base. else, it's $25. Mikey, and compared to most districts around us? Uh, I believe you do have that information also. Uh, and I'll pull this up here. Um, San Benito ISD, they're at 56.73. Harlingen right now doesn't charge anything, but I understand that's going to change. Uh, Donna does 15, but I do understand that's going to change as well. Uh, PSJA is still zero, and this is just base. So we're just staying in line, right? We're, we're, we're pretty much in line. You have McAllen. Not really. I think we're a lot lower. <coughs> if you look at the big picture. We're a lot lower, Because yes. of the co-pays. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's where it all, you know, a person or a family will possibly uh, go to What I'm the, trying to get at is we have a really good plan for our employees. We have a very good plan. And so mm -hmm. I just want, you know, for the public to know that even though they're going to have to contribute just a little bit more, it's still kind of in line. It's, it's actually uh, still very competitive. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. I have a motion by Andrew and a second by Oscar <clears throat> to approve the district's health benefit program plan employees' contribution. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item G, discussion and possible action for the board to consider renewal of the district's voluntary insurance products or authorized administration to solicit proposals for the same. Dr. Canales. 
Um, Board of Trustees, I am recommending that you approve renewal of all the seven voluntary insurance products for the second year of a three-year renewal option. We have Mr. Delarosa here. Do you have any questions? I move to renew. I'll second. Motion by Patrick and a second by Oscar Caballero to approve the renewal of the district's voluntary insurance products. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item H, discussion of possible action for the board to consider approval, approve a plan of finance and a method of sale for the possible insurance and sale. That doesn't sound right, does it? Issuance. Met issuance. Okay, possible issuance and sale of limited maintenance tax notes, sales series 2018. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, this is due to the flood of June 20th. We had estimated, and Mr. Andres has talked about, anywhere from 10 to 15 million, then it was 8.5 to 10 million. What we do need now that we have some sounder information is 5 million. Is that correct? So I am recommending that the Board of Trustees approve to proceed with the final plan of finance as presented and select a method of sale for the issuance and sale of approximately 5 million ma maintenance tax notes for the purchase of buses, school buses, other district vehicles, and equipment. So do you have Mr. Vela here who's presenting? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. No, Mr. Vela. Mr. Board President, members of the board, Dr. Canales, ladies and gentlemen, for the record, my name is Chris Vela with uh, Hilltop Securities Financial Advisors to the district. Um, we submitted a, a presentation and um, for the board, and I'd like to start on page six, I'm sorry, page five, which is the summary of the plan of finance, and um, start out by saying that the West Laco Independent School District intends to issue limited maintenance tax notes, series 18, for purchase of school buses, district vehicles, equipment, and pay the cost of issuance of the notes. The district will request a limited tax rating from Standard & Poor's for the notes. Currently, the district's unlimited tax debt is rated AA by Fitch and A plus by Standard & Poor's. Insurance on the notes will be considered by Hilltop Securities. The financial advisor will determine if insurance benefits the transaction. A decision will be made once the bids are received and analyzed. The structure, the tax exempt bank qualified fixed interest rates through, through the maturity, total project fund of $5 million deposited to the construction, to the project fund. It's a 15 year amortization. Interest will be payable semi-annually on February the 15th, August the 15th, beginning on February the 15th of 19. Principal will be payable annually on 15, February 15th, beginning February the 15th of 19. And it's got a 10 year call option uh, dated February the 15th of 28. The analysis shown in the subsequent pages was derived based on pricing views as of August the 10th, 18 plus 30 basis points for purposes of illustration. The results are estimate only and are subject to change at any time. This page is a summary of your outstanding limited tax debt, the total debt service column is what you existingly are paying on an annual basis. And then the proposed limited maintenance tax notes, series 18, it's for the, for the series 18 notes. And then of course your total <coughs> new limited debt debt service. <coughs> Sources of funds, par amount of the bonds, 4.855. Premium on the bonds, 286,748. For total sources of funds of 5,141,748. $5 million deposited to the project fund, cost of issuance, underwriter's discount, notes <coughs> issuance for total uses of funds of $5,141,748 to match the total sources of funds. The average life of the bonds is 11.098 years. The assumed all interest cost uh, rate is 3.940. Price in views as of 810, as I previously stated, plus the 30 basis points, assumes A plus Double A bank qualified interest rates subject to change at any time. Assumes a closing date of 11, November the 7th of 18th or delivery of the bond proceeds. The next page that I would like to go through would be uh, the financing team. 
uh, Financial Advisor, Hilltop Securities, Bond Council, Bickerstaff, Heath, Delgado, and Acosta, Paying Agent, U.S. Bank, Rating Agency, Standard & Poor's, Underwriter to be determined by the district if negotiated sale, Underwriters Council to be chosen by the underwriters. And then the timetable under the schedule of events. Page 19. 19. Page what? One more. On the schedule of events on August the 13th, which is tonight, present the plan of finance to the Board of uh, Trustees. The Board considers and, and approves final plan of finance and direct 19. staff. Page 19. And consultants to move forward with the plan of finance. The board of trustee considers and approves the method of sale and appoints underwriter if negotiated method of sale is chosen. Last day of board of trustees to appoint an underwriter if negotiated sale was approved on 8-13. Uh, pricing would be on October the 15th at a special board meeting. Pricing of the notes. Board of trustee authorizes issuance of the notes. Uh, Attorney General approves the sale before the closing, closing and delivery of the funds to the district on the 7th of November, and of course the first interest and principal payment on the notes. The reason for the special board meeting is because the previous week, which is your regular board meeting, is Columbus <coughs> Day and the markets are closed on that day and there will be no transactions of any financial nature. So we check with our, our underwriting desk and they don't recommend selling the week before and keeping the paper for that long. So they recommended, if at all possible, a special cold board meeting. Any questions? Mr. Vela, do you recommend a negotiated sale over a competitive? We did, and uh, we recommended that to the board, I mean to the staff. Okay. We've done that before when we do the maintenance tax notes. Like and and uh, as far as the debt service on the maintenance tax notes, is that built into your proposed budget for this yes. coming year? The, the first payment would be in uh, February 2019. Okay. It's 287000 that we added to the budget already. I forgot to mention that when I mentioned it earlier. When we did the adjustment to the budget, we also included that amount okay. in the budget. Just a, just a very simple question. <clears throat> very simple. We're going to borrow $5 million Yes. For 15 years. Right? 15 years? 7? 15 years is correct. It's on page 7. Okay. Yes, sir. 5 million for 15 years. Okay. At the end of 15 years, how much do we pay back? Principal and interest? Mm -hmm. Everything. 7 million 164. So we're going to borrow five million. So in 15 years, we're going to pay back how much? Seven million, 164, 2891. Okay. Or four million, 855, 855,000 in, in principal, and two million, 309 in interest. That'll to that totals up to the 7.164. Okay, Andres. Yes. How many how many total loans do we have? We keep on borrowing money. So every year. Have you calculated how much you're going to put in the budget for all the loans that we borrowed? <coughs> yes, sir. How much? The amount right now would yeah, be... Total. Uh, how many loans do we have? Total loans. This could be the fourth one mm -hmm. that, we, that we have. But how much? Oh, total amount? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember right now. Well, everything that uh, we would that we have already right now is $26,295,000 in principle. And we're looking at borrowing four million eight hundred and fifty five on this one. So that will be about $32 million, including this loan. We borrow, for example, $12.7 million to do HVAC replacements mm -hmm. in a lot of That's the schools. That's what I'm that. We get so many loans. Right. Now you got to pay them back. Mm, yeah. It's easy to get the money up front. Then yeah. you got to pay it back. And the reason we had to borrow because our bond didn't pass, so we had to do no, a lot no, of improvements, and we had to do the loans. I understand. Yeah. And they get paid from MNO taxes, not from INS taxes. For what? the current budget that we have, we pay them. What's the life of the vehicles that we're going to buy with this proposed maintenance? Uh, buses are at least 10 years, for 10 to 15 years for the buses. Sometimes we have some buses that are 20 years. Uh, I guess my, my concern was that I, 
I don't want to. I'm low. I'm <laughs> low to take out. I'm low on, on an item that will be. You know, we'll have to salvage it before, and, and you know, we're not longer using it, and we're still paying on it. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. It's kind of <laughs> like using a credit card to buy groceries, and you've eaten it, but you're still paying interest on it later on. Yes. It's kind of an idea. Mr. Garcia, what's the oldest bus we still have in working condition? We had uh, some 2000s. That were still running? Yes. So they're 18 About 18 years. 18 years. Okay. And so, actually, I mean, those, those were the ones that survived the flood. They're right. Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. De La Rosa, can you please come to... And again, uh, Andres, the note is to replace the buses, the Suburbans, half the fleet, the white fleet, mm -hmm. the maintenance, the Suburbans, and all the buses, correct? Yes, and we have Plus a couple some, of other projects included. Yes. But, and then some, what, moors and whatnot? Yes, some works at the... Okay, Mr. De La Rosa, how many times have we flooded in, at the bus barn? To my in knowledge... In the last 30 years, give or take. To my knowledge, we've not, that area has never flooded. Uh, and I believe the assistant director has been here 27 years, and he can How many claims have we filed? None. How many inches of rain did we get that day? That day... Between 16 and 18? Well, no, the highest point was about four, a little over four feet. Or four and feet. water receded was about two and a half that okay. stayed there for about two, three days. So <laughs> was there anything? officially 16 inches in four no. hours. Did we have anything? Or Dr. Rivera, did you have anything in place, going back to when you were the super, of a contingency plan to move units, vehicles, stuff like that? Yes, we, the, had, we had a plan. You all had a plan back During in the day? During a hurricane. Well, I guess my point is, we can, you know when a hurricane's coming, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the forecasters tells us, hurricane's coming, prepare yourselves. What you cannot prepare for is flood. We weren't prepared to take on that amount of water. The forecast the day before for June the 20th was three to six inches of rain. You Actually, would assume that the vehicles. <clears throat> I went back and what looked when I heard the, the gentleman. Uh, what was the forecast, Mike? And I'll email this to the board for their, for our lead, I'll email it to Rosemary. So the email that came out from the National Weather Service uh, on Tuesday uh, called for isolated two to four inches uh, in isolated areas. Two, two to so, four inches um, produces two to three feet of water in poor drainage. So. Uh, and with, like a, with that information, Mr. Garcia, you had no reason to move our fleet. Not at that point, sir, because we okay. just... Okay, uh, so none of us like to borrow money. But the point of the matter is we cannot control what happened that day. And so now we're stuck with having to provide vehicles for the students of our district. As much as we don't like to borrow the money, and you're right, Dr. Rivera, we're going to borrow five to, and pay back seven. But the point is, if you don't do it, then what do we do? Where is the solution if you don't do this? Because the bond did not pass. So what do we do? What is your solution if you don't approve this tonight? What is your solution to do it? And if you had something in place, then let's look at what Doc used to have in place. But it's not a hurricane where we can know, board up your homes, move your vehicles, protect your children. So what do y'all have in place? And I'm not doing anything here other than the fact that, you know, we had somebody earlier say that we're just spending money and, and just to put it out there, and that's not the truth. The truth is we need to take care of our students and this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, if y'all have a better solution, fine. But I've never seen rain, that much rain. Ever. I'm 43 and I asked my mama who's 73. And she's never seen that much rain. And so unless y'all have a solution to help our students, and instead of people going out there, because I'm getting calls on why we're doing this, if y'all have a solution, then bring the solution. But Mr. Garcia and Mr. De La Rosa couldn't expect 18 inches of rain or more in an area that is not a designated flood zone. You practice that or what? Because nobody's going against this loan. 
No. No. But nobody's going against again, the loans. I got, I got calls. And I know. Let's just say that. that you have got calls. That's because, okay. But because we all know and understand all you really had to say was that we had a storm. Well, that's okay, and I did it the way I And did that it. is that's the okay. reason that we're having to um, to borrow the money, which is very understandable. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I and it's very clear story. to every single board member here that we did have the storm, like you, like you stated, and that is why we're having to borrow the money. Nobody went to another another solution, well, you know. And we all understand that the only way that we could do it is by. Uh, you know, sacrificing some projects and, right. and putting the kids through hardship and the whole district Just through hardship. Just being transparent, Mr. Lopez. And that's, that's why we're moving forward. Okay, so you're, we... You're, you're right, Mr. Lopez. And, you know, my question, <clears throat> my question was very simple. We just can't keep on... We need to borrow. I understand that. But you can't keep on borrowing and borrowing because then you have to pay it back. So every year, you put a large <laughs> amount into your budget. And that was my only question. Yeah. We, have, we, we need the buses. We got to do this, but also we have to be very, very careful that we can pay it back. Yeah. Like a credit card, you can't keep on borrowing on a credit card. Yeah. That's my, that was my, yeah. my, my and concern. And make sure that you keep tally of what we're having to do <clears throat> and what we're having to pay extra because uh, some of our past bonds have not passed. And moving forward, we will need to cross that road again. We can't talk about it right now, but we will need to cut, cut, cross that road again. Yeah. Moving forward, uh, along the lines of along the lines of what Dr. Rivera said, that we had to pay uh, in help with the budget. We didn't go with a 10-year option. If we had picked up 10 years instead of 15 years, the payment would have been somewhere between 470 to 450,000 per year, and we saved maybe 800 million, I mean, 800 thousand dollars in interest. <laughs> Let's yeah, do that. that <laughs> <laughs> so, because of the situation we have on the budget, we went with this year. Okay. Uh, like Mr. Vela said, it could be paid early after 10 years. So if we have more money later. At the end of 10 years, we could pay it. We don't have to wait. So we'll save interest from the years 11 through 15. When okay. I was superintendent, all those loans that we had, are they paid back already? Most we, of them? we still have two that are just one caps, payment to go. The old caps yes, sir. loan? Yeah. We're almost done. One more payment year, n next year. So, and back, to like my, so back, to my, and something. back to my question, how many loans do we have all total? Yeah. For we next year, will be four, year, four loans left. One of the caps is still there. The one we got for HVAC, the one for 15 million, the generator is 17 million, and this one will be the fourth one. Okay. Can we read the item again so we can either make a motion or discuss it some more? Discussion and possible action for the board to consider approve a plan of finance and a method of sale for the proposal of issuance, sale issuance and sale of limited maintenance tax note series 2018. Dr. Canales. We are recommending that the Board of Trustees approve to proceed with a final plan of finance as presented and select a method of sale for the issuance and sell of approximately five million maintenance tax notes for the purchase of school buses, other district vehicles, and equipment. So a and motion by Andrew. Well that included that it would be a negotiated sale, Dr. Canales? I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. Sure. Oh, yes. Administration recommends the negotiated sell negotiated method of sell for the maintenance tax notes. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Do I get a second? I'll second, I'll second the motion. Okay. I have a motion by Andrew, second by Oscar, to approve a plan of finance and a method of sale for the possible issuance and sale of limited maintenance tax notes, series 2018. Is there any further discussion? One quick question, Mr. Sanchez, on yes, the, uh, the insurance reimbursement. So this is this, these funds are going to be to cover what's not going to be what the total cost of, of replacing all the vehicles and the buses. And, and what, where does the insurance reimbursement come into play? Uh, I had listed on the agenda item $3.2 million reimburse, uh, insurance uh, settlement on buses, suburbans, and pickup trucks. That's going to help with this. There's going to be additional for the buildings, but that's another area. Okay. And we don't have the final amount on those yet, so. But on these items, it will be about 3.2. For deducting that from the amount that we need to buy, we need about $5 million to, to borrow. That's preliminary. Uh, okay. Preliminary 3.2 million. It's not final. Thank you. All those in favor of signifying by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying no. Motion carries. Item I. Discussion possible action for the board <laughs> to select one or more underwriters for the possible issuance and sale of limited maintenance tax notes, series 2018. Dr. Canales. 
Okay, Board of Trustees, I'm recommending that you approve to select one underwriter company for the possible okay. issuance and sell of approximately five million maintenance tax notes for the purchase of school buses, other district okay. vehicles, and equipment. The administration and the financial advisors recommend for the board to select one company as the underwriters for this transaction due to the size of the issue. If the board is inclined to select two underwriting companies, administration recommends to hire one company as senior underwriters and another company as manager underwriters. The senior underwriters would be assigned to sell 60% of the bond issue and the manager underwriters would be assigned to sell 40% of the bond issue respectively. And we have Mr. Bella and Mr. Sanchez here. I see that we worked with two before, Estrada Hinojosa and Company and Frost Capital Markets. Yes, sir. Have either one, has either one's work been better than the other? No, they both perform very well. Is there one that you would recommend? Um, either what? one, uh, Estrada has in the past acted as senior, and of course Frost has been your co-manager. Uh, Frost Bank has very good distribution in the area of bank qualified, specifically bank qualified. So either way that you would like to go would work. Okay, then I'll move to put Estrada and Hosa and Company as the senior and the Frost Capital Markets as the managing. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Patrick and a second by Andrew to approve two underwriters for the possible insurance of sale of limited man tax series 2000, tax notes series 2018, that being Estrada and Hosa and company and frost capital markets. Which one was which? Uh, with Estrada being the senior and Estrada the being the manager. And for, okay. Any further discussion? All the favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item J, discussion possible action to, thank you, Chris. You're welcome, sir. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Vela. Discussion and possible action to ratify the purchase of 10 school buses and five vehicles as a result of damage associated with <laughs> severe weather in June 2018. Dr. Ganales. Board of Trustees, on June 28, 2018, at the special board meeting, uh, you approve an agenda item to ratify and approve the procurement of materials, labor, and other services as needed for the immediate repairs of the district facilities and or equipment damage because of the unforeseen heavy rains that occurred in Wasico, Texas, on June 20th, 2018, and thereafter. And this was allowed by the Texas Education uh, Code. Uh, we are recommending that you ratify the purchase of 10 conventional school buses, three pickup trucks, and two suburban SUVs ordered between Tuesday, July 10th, 2018, and Friday, August 3rd, 2018, from the vendors listed below. And there is a list of vendors. This million dollars is accounted for in your proposed budget? Uh, this uh, the, the, the total estimated cost was about one million eighty-eight thousand dollars. Yes, this is it's a actual cost. This okay. is a purchase order that we issued. Okay. And uh, in July, uh, July twelve board meeting, we had a budget amendment to bring money from fund balance, and we increased revenues also to set up the money for all the buses and the pickup trucks and suburban. The money's in the budget. Okay. Yes. Great. Then I move to approve to ratify. I'll second. Have motion by Patrick and a second by Oscar to approve. The ratification the, and ratify the purchase of 10 school buses and five vehicles as a result of the damage associated with severe weather in June 2018. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Uh, being that we have already gone through closed session, closed meeting, the next item would be item number 13, adjournment. So, time is 8.34 and this meeting is concluded. Hmm?